right, I am started. And if I remember right, on Tuesday, we were in 2.3 and we got through number four. And we were just working on solving more complicated um, equations. Okay, so we just have been kind of like adding steps to our equation solving skills. Okay, so what we're going to do today is keep going with that. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm still going to be in 2.3, but I'm just going to keep going. So I'm going to move on to number five. Okay, and number five, again, it's just a more complicated several step equation. But we are going to um, just follow our steps. And I'm trying to take roll as y'all come in, so I don't have to do it at the end. I think I've got everybody so far. Okay. What we're going to do, first of all, remember, especially when we have several things or a side at least that has multiple things going on on it, make sure that we just keep that equal sign in the same spot. Moving it around is going to mess you up. Okay, so I'm going to just bring down that equal sign where it is and then try to see if I can clean up either side. Okay, nothing's really going on on this right side. So that negative three is just going to come but I do have things I can do to help me clean up this left side. The first thing that needs to happen is I need to get rid of the parentheses. Okay? Because if you have numbers trapped inside parentheses, you can't do anything with them. So they need to come out of the parentheses first. And the way you make that happen is you distribute whatever is bumping up against those parentheses, which in this case is that negative. So we need to think of that as a negative one, which means we're multiplying everything in the parentheses by negative one, which means everything inside those parentheses sign is going to change because that's what happens when you multiply something by negative one, it's sign changes. So let's see, the first thing I have here is negative one times eight X, which gives me negative eight X negative one times negative four. So again, that just changes that sign to positive four. Now these, that's where the parentheses end. So I don't, I'm not distributing this negative to anything else. So these last two terms on this side, I'm just gonna drop down. Plus five X minus seven. There's my equal, drop down the negative three. Okay, now what I'm going to do again, I noticed that my equal sign is right here. Still nothing going on on the right. Nothing, I'm just gonna drop down that negative three. But this left side has some cleaning up that can happen by combining like terms. Remember, if you have like terms on the same side of your equal symbol, so here's my equal symbol. So I'm looking for anything that I can put in the same basket, which means Look at this X and that X. They can go together. There's no reason to write them separately when you can write them together, which means I just need to know how many X's I have. Well, here I've got negative eight, here I've got plus five. You can just type that in to your calculator. Remember your negative buttons below the three. So negative eight, I think plus five. to get your negative three. So all my X's in one basket would be negative three X. I also noticed, what about why, is there any reason I couldn't put these two terms together? I've got a positive four and a negative seven, right? Those are just plain numbers. They don't have letters on them. They're plain numbers, which means I can put those together also. So again, I would just type in my calculator four 
minus seven, which would give me negative three. So I'm done cleaning that up. I'll just drop down that negative three. Now, I am to the point where I have all my X's are on one side. I don't have any X's over here. They're all over here, which means this is the side you want to work with because you want to do whatever it takes to get that X by itself. Now, remember, hooked on numbers, go away last. You do not ever mess with the number that's hooked on to the X until it is your last step, okay? Which means the first thing I need to get, get rid of is this minus three. And I'm gonna do that by doing the opposite of minus three, which is to add three. So now that I'm doing something to this side besides just cleaning it up, if I do it to this side, I have to do it to the other side now. So I'm now I'm gonna add that plus three over here also. Here's my equal. So the minus three plus three cancels. All I'm left with is this negative three X over here. When I type in negative three plus three, they're opposites of each other, right? If you add a three to a negative three, you are gonna get zero, which is fine, right? Zero is just another number. Now, there's one last step, right? There is a number hooked on and we get rid of hooked on numbers. And when I'm saying hooked on, that means there's no sign in between here that's separating this negative three from that X. That's what I mean by hooked on. And the way we get rid of hooked on numbers is to divide by whatever it is, which in this case is negative three. I did this side, which means I have to do this side. So that one just knocks that out. There's my X all by itself. Once X is by itself, the answer on the other, the number on the other side of the equal sign is your answer. When you type in, if you type this into your calculator, zero divided by negative three, which is what's happening here, it gives you zero, right? Zero, it doesn't matter what the denominator is. If your numerator is zero, zero over anything is still zero. Okay, all the problems that we've worked so far in 2.3, I keep forgetting about this. So you do have a multiple choice situation. We're about to run into the B and C kind of problems. Okay, but, but for so far, you've worked it out and you've gotten a solution. So you've been choosing A and then just putting whatever your answer is. Okay, but let's look at number six. Something funny happens here. So we have 8x minus 3 times x minus 2 equals 5x plus 3. There's my equal. Looking at the right side, it doesn't look like there's anything I can do to this side, right? Because that's an x and that's not an x, so I can't put those terms together. So that's just going to drop down. Okay, my cleaning up is going to be happening over here. Again, I see parentheses, which means that's the first thing that needs to go away so that I can move the number. 
numbers and letters that are inside those parentheses, we need to unlock them. Get them out of the parentheses. The way I do that is, again, distribute whatever's bumping up against it. This 8x is just going to drop down. The number bumping up against this parentheses is a negative 3. Right? The negative is with this hook that is with that 3. So this negative 3 is what is going into those parentheses by multiplying. So the first thing I have is negative 3 times x, which this gives me negative 3x. Then I have this negative 3 times negative 2. When you're multiplying two negatives together, you're going to get a positive. So you've got negative 3 times negative 2, which is positive 6. I'm just going to drop this right side down. Bring down my equal. Looking at either side, seeing if I can clean up. Looks like I can put some eggs in the same basket on this left side, right? These are both X's. There's my equal sign. They're on the same side. So I'm just going to put them together. I've got 8X minus 3X, which is 5X. Drop down my plus 6. Still haven't done anything over here. So 5x plus 3. Dropping down my equal. So now I've cleaned up the left and the right. No like terms I can put together or anything like that. So what I'm trying to do now is look and see if I have x, if all my x's are on one side together or if they're on separate sides. I have x's on the left and the right which means I need to cancel one of them out, okay? They're both the same, so it doesn't really matter what, which one you cancel out in this situation, because I'm just gonna, if I cancel this one out, that means I need to subtract it off, subtract the five X. Well, if I do it here, I have to do the same thing here. So when I do it on the left side, I put it underneath its like term, right? If I'm putting X's over here, I put them under the other X's. This cancels, 5X minus 5X cancels. That's why I did it, to cancel it off this side. But what else happened? Look at this side. It canceled the X's off of that side also. Right? This guy canceled that one. So I don't have any X's on the left or the right. Well, if I'm solving for X and now there's not any X's, some, one of two things is occurring. What you need to do is see what you do have left. On this left side, I've got a six. On this right side, I've got a three. Well, here's an equal symbol which means this side is supposed to equal that side to make a true statement, right? <clears throat> I don't want different numbers. Six does not equal three, which means there is no solution to this problem. There is not a number that you can put in for those X's to make one side equal to the other. So this, oh, they call it intersect. Okay, there is no number that is going to satisfy that equation. So if you'll notice, that's when the B or C comes in. Okay, the difference between B and C This B says all real numbers, C says the empty set. So if your X is canceled like they did here, but you weren't left with a true statement here, that's the empty set. That is no solution. If what makes the other thing happen, 
which would make it all real numbers. So if I'm following my equation solving steps, I would bring down my equal. I see I have X's on both sides, so I would subtract that one off. But just like the last problem, when I subtract it off the left side, it cancels it there too. Which means if I bring down my equal sign on the left, I'm left with a two. And on the right, I'm left with a two. That's the difference. So either your X's are going to cancel out and you're not going to have a true statement like I did on number six, or your angels cancel out, but you do have a true statement. Two does equal two. They are the same thing. That's when it would be all real numbers. It doesn't matter what you put in place of those X's. All the numbers work. Okay, and you can tell it by looking at it because if you have 3x plus 2 equals 3x plus 2, that's the same exact thing, right? So that would be all real numbers. Okay, moving on to number seven. Now, this number seven and eight are the main reasons we stopped and didn't keep going on Tuesday, okay? Because I wanted fresh brain power before we started doing these, because they have a bunch of fractions. All right, I see a mess is what I see, okay? Now, my old rules, which are still rules, and they could be, be, be done this way, means these are R's that I can put together, right? They're both R's, they're like terms. I can add those together, but if I was gonna add this R to this one, this one's a fraction with a denominator of seven, this one's a whole number, which means I'd have to do a lot of work to be able to do that because you can't add fractions that don't have the same denominator. So I'd have to go through all those steps. So if I notice something like that on a problem, I say to myself, I am going to get rid of the fractions on the front end before I do anything else. I just want to see what this equation would look like without fractions. So what I would do is look at all the different denominators. I've got fours and seven. So I'm going to come over here. And what I'm doing is called finding the least common denominator. Which means the smallest number that in this case, seven and four both go into. Okay. I think the easiest way to do this is to go to your biggest one and use it. First thing you would check is does four go into seven evenly? And it wouldn't, right? Four doesn't, seven doesn't divide by four evenly. You get a decimal. So it's not seven. The very next thing that seven will go into is whatever seven times two is, which is 14, but if I check four, 14 divided by four, four doesn't go into it. That's why you get a decimal. So it's not 14. What's the next thing? So seven goes into seven, then it goes into 14. The next number that seven goes into is whatever seven times three is, which is 21. 
right? So I'm doing all the multiples, everything seven goes into, and then I'm checking to see if four also goes into it. So let's see, does 21 divide evenly by four? So if you type that in, you still get a decimal, right? You get 5.25, which means it doesn't go in there evenly. So I'm gonna keep going. The seven goes into seven, 14, 21. The next thing that seven goes into is 28. So when you check 28 and you divide it by four, it does go in there. You get a whole number, which means that 28 is the first number that seven, and four will both go into. So we're gonna use that 28 to our advantage. What you're gonna do with the 28, which by the way, the first thing it's gonna ask you is to find the least common denominator, which would be 28. 28 is what we just found was the smallest thing that seven and four go into. The reason they want you to find that is because you're going to use that. I'm going to use that 28 and give everybody a 28 in the top. Even if you're not a fraction, you're still going to get a 28. And I'm talking about this guy right here. Even though he's not a fraction, he still gets a 28 because what we're using is the equation rule that says I can do anything I want to this side as long as I do to that side, which means I can't just skip giving somebody a 28. I'm trying to keep everything balanced, which means I got to multiply everybody on both sides by 28. Now, here's what you're going to do with the 28. Remember when we were checking in our calculator, all of these denominators, which are sevens and fours, go into 28. That was the point of it. So you're going to actually do that division now. What is 28 divided by seven? That's gonna cancel out the 28 over seven is just gonna turn into a four. Look what went away, your denominator. If you don't have a denominator, then you don't have a fraction. This one doesn't have that step because it doesn't have a denominator down here. So we're this one doesn't need any work on that step. Does this one have a denominator? It does, which means I need to do that step. What is 28 divided by four? Well, that just gives me seven. Again, denominator's gone. Plus, again, 28 divided by four again gives me seven, denominator's gone. So all of your denominators just disappeared, which means you don't have fractions anymore. So now what you need to do is this new number that you created when you did this step, you multiply it by what's left right here. So what do I have here? I've got four times negative eight R. Well, four times negative eight gives me negative 32 R. Plus what's left here, 28 times four R. I don't know what that is. 28 times four gives me 112 R. There's my equal. Same thing over here. Denominator's gone from that 28. It divided it out, so I'm left with a seven. Seven times one R gives me seven R plus seven times 73. I don't know what that is. 511. So look at your equation now. I still have work to do, of course, but look at the difference between the way it looks here and the way it looks up here. I'd much rather see what I have now because it doesn't have any fractions. 
okay? So that's what I did with that 28. I got rid of those fractions. Now I'm just gonna use those equation solving skills that I have. So I brought down my equal sign. Look at your left. They're both arms. They're on the same side of the equal sign. So I'm gonna put those in the same basket. So let's see my R's. How many R's do I have? I have whatever negative 32 plus 112 is. That's how many R's I really have. So that's what I'll just tell my calculator. Negative 32 plus 112. So when I put my R's together in one basket, I have 80 of them. So again, I'm just putting this R with that one, which gave me 80 R's. Nothing to combine over here, right? These are R's, but those aren't, so you can't put them together. So let's see, I've got 7R plus 511 over here. So now, here's, I have R's that are on different sides. When you have R's that are on different sides, that's when you want to cancel out your small one. So let's bring down my equal. My small one is that 7R. So let's cancel it by getting rid of it, subtracting it off. If I did it to this side, I got to do it to this side. So minus 7R is my equal. So 80 minus 7 gives me 73R. R's are gone over here. All I have left is the 511. One last step, right? All that's left is a number hooked on to R and hooked on numbers go away by dividing. So I'm dividing both sides by that 73. So now I have R equals whatever that math is. So just ask your calculator, what's 511 divided by 73? And it gives you seven. All right, I'm gonna work number eight and then I'll put a fraction one on the board and pause the, the video for a second and let y'all work on it. And then I'll work it out to sit to check it. Okay, so I'll do number eight first. Number eight says three eighths X minus one third X. Plus six equals one over six X. X minus one third X plus six equals one six X. So again, I got fractions all over the place and I just don't want to deal with it. So I'm going to do whatever it takes to get rid of my fractions on the front end. So over here in a little sidebar, I'm going to find the least common denominator, just like I did on the last one that ended up being 28. I'm going to find the least common denominator of this problem. Because once I find it, what do I do with it? I put it on top of everybody and divide out, divide away my denominators. So let's see, what are the denominators I'm dealing with this time? Eight, three, and six. So what I have 
found is the easiest way, there's multiple ways, but I think the easiest way to find the least common denominator is always to start with whatever your biggest number is and go from there. So what you're going to do is find, start finding numbers that eight goes into. And then check to see if the three and the six also go into those numbers. So let's see, the first number that eight goes into is itself, right? But three or six, neither one go into eight. So now I'm gonna take another step and find the next number that eight goes into, which would be eight times two. So after eight, the next number that eight goes into is 16. But if you tried to divide those other numbers, so 16 divided by three gives me a decimal. So it doesn't even matter if the other one goes into it. So it's not 16, not eight, not 16. Let's see, after 16, the next number that eight goes into is 24. So let's try 24 and see if the other ones divide into it. So let's see, 24 divided by three is the first one I'm gonna check. If I don't get a decimal, I'm not too concerned with what this number is right here. As long as it's not a decimal, that means that three goes into 24 evenly. So now I need to try that six. So let's see, 24 divided by six, no decimal. So what do I know now? I know eight goes into 24, three goes into 24, and six goes into 24, which means all of them go into 24. 24 is the magic number that everybody gets up top to make their fractions go away. Right? Everybody on both sides of the equal, even this guy right here, that's not a fraction. He still gets the 24 because if you don't do the same thing to everybody on both sides, you're unbalancing your equation. So now the step is I'm going to go to all of the terms that do have denominators and use the 24 to get rid of them. What is 24 divided by eight? So the 24 over eight goes away because 24 divided by eight is just a three. 24 divided by three. 24 divided by three is eight. I don't do this step here, right? This one doesn't have a denominator. It doesn't have anything I'm trying to make go away. Like these did. So this, you don't do anything at all to this part right here. When I come to the other side, it does have a denominator. I need to go away. So 24 over six leaves me with four. So once again, look who's gone. No denominator here, here, or here. All your denominators are gone. No denominators mean no fractions. Once you do that step that removes those denominators, you're gonna come back now and multiply what's left. So let's see, what do I have left here? I've got three times three, and it's an X. Don't lose your X. Three times three X gives me nine X. Minus eight times one X, eight times one gives me eight X. Plus, I've got 24 times six left there. 24 times six gives me 144. There's my equal. What's left here? Four times one X, which is for x. This equation is much nicer than that equation.
Bring down my equal. Look at that left side. Do you see anything you can put in the same basket? Yeah, there's no reason to write those separately right there. They're both X's. Put them together. They're on the same side of the equal sign, so I'm going to put them together. Let's see, 9X minus 8X just leaves me with 1X. Going to drop down the plus 144. Equals 4X. Drop down my equal. I'm to the point now where I have X's on both sides. Okay? Now, usually... What I do, and I'm going to do it here, is I compare the X's and I cancel off whichever one is the smallest, which would be this 1X, right? 1X is smaller than 4X. So I'm going to cancel off this one by subtracting it off. So it's gone over here. All I'm left with is the 144. Equals on the right, I've got 4x minus 1x, which is 3x. What's the goal of solving your equation for x to be alone? X is, it's on the wrong, it looks like it's on the wrong side, but remember, it doesn't matter what side it's on. It just wants to be alone. And the only thing that's preventing it from being alone is this 3 that's hooked on to it. So to get rid of the hooked on, you divide. So drop down your X, excuse me, drop down your equal. Those threes cancel, there's X all by itself. So all I need to do here is divide that 144 by three, which gives me 48. All right, I'm gonna go to math lab real quick and pick out a problem. So just like y'all would go to your math lab, I'm just going to go to y'all's class, student links, there's all your my, my, my lab math all assignments just like y'all would do, that's what I'm doing. Let's see, where are we? 2.3, I'm gonna do another number eight. So it should be the same exact kind of problem, which it is, it's just that my numbers are different. Okay, so I'm gonna write that one on the board. And Lynn, I'm gonna pause the video for a second and give y'all a couple of minutes to try to solve it. So use the same exact steps that we just used on this number eight on the board. You're going to find the least common denominator first. So I've got four fifths X minus one fourth X. Plus six equals seven tenths X. All right, I'm gonna work it out and see what I get. The first thing I need to do is come up with the number that is going to make my denominators disappear. That's gonna be whatever the smallest thing they all go into is. So let's see, what numbers am I dealing with? I'm dealing with five, four, and 10. Those are all of the denominators. Those are all of the bottom numbers of the fractions. So let's see, I'm gonna go with my biggest one, which is 10. The first thing that 10 goes into is itself, right? Because 
10 times one is 10. So 10 goes into 10. Five even goes into 10, but four doesn't. So here's what would happen if you use the 10. It would actually get rid of your five and your 10, right? Don't write this down. Because I could do the 10 over 10, that would just cancel. I could do 10 over five and turn that into a two. But what would happen here? I would do 10 over four and that wouldn't divide evenly, which means it's not gonna get rid of that fraction, okay? That's what happens if you use numbers that these don't all go into. So 10 didn't work because it doesn't work for my four. Now let's see the next thing after 10. The next thing that 10 goes into is 20. Five goes into 20. So does four, right? 20 does divide evenly by four and five and 10. So there's your number. Now, let me tell you this, if you kept going 20 is just the lowest number that they will all go into. There are other numbers that five, four, and 10 go into that would work. They're just a lot higher, okay? So 20 is the number that I'm gonna put on top of everybody. Remember, you get the 20, whether you're a fraction or not. Everybody gets 20. Dropping down my equal. Now, after you put the magic 20 up there, remember that magic 20 is gonna make your denominators disappear. That's the next step. 20 over five gives me four. So four is what's left there. 20 over four. 20 divided by four gives me five. So that's what's left there. This one doesn't have a division, right? Because it doesn't have a denominator. It wasn't a fraction. It still gets the 20 because you have to do the same thing to everybody. You just don't need to divide on that one because it doesn't have a fraction that needs to go away. But this guy does 20 over 10 leaves me with two. Okay, now I'm gonna erase this just to get it out of the way. What do you do after you make your denominators go away, right? Because that's what just happened. No more fractions. You multiply what's left. So let's see here. I've got four times 4x. So four times 4x gives me 16x minus five times 1x. Five times one gives me 5x. Plus, multiply here, 20 times 6 gives me 120. Equals 2 times 7x, which leaves me with 14x. So again, bye-bye fractions. Here's my equal. I'll just bring it down. So let's see. On the left side of my equal, I see terms I can write together. The X's, I need to just smush them together. So let's see, how many X's do I have all together? I've got 16 minus five, which gives me 11 X. Bring down my plus 120 equals 14 X. Dropping down my equal again. Now, Nothing I can put together over here. So now I'm to the step where I do have X's on both sides, which means I'm gonna cancel out my smallest one. Well, my smallest one is the 11. So I'm gonna get rid of it by subtracting 11 X. If I do it here, I gotta do it here. So my X's are gone here. Drop down my 120, that's all that's left over here. Equals 14 minus 11. So now I'm just left with three X's here. So I'm almost done, right? X needs to be alone. The only thing that's making it not be alone is the three that's hooked onto it, which means I need to divide by it. So 
So the threes are gone. My X is alone. Just do that division in your calculator. 120 divided by three gives me 40. All right, the last one in this section is definitely a calculator problem, right? Look at all that decimal. I'm not trying to do that out on paper. All right. Zero point two four times ten thousand minus zero point zero three Y equals zero point zero seven. times y plus 10,000. All right, the first thing I would do on a problem like this is make sure you wrote all that down right. 0 0.24 times 10,000 minus 0 0.03y equals 0 0.07 times y plus 10,000. Okay. Here's my equal. Definitely want to keep it straight on a problem like this. I am removing parentheses. So let's see. The first thing here, I'm going to distribute that 0 0.24 to that 10,000. Over here, I don't see parentheses. That, so that 0 0.07 is going to go to that y and that 10,000. So let's see, over here, I've got 0 0.24 times 10,000, okay? I'm just typing that in. 0 0.24 times 10,000, which gives me 2,400. I'm gonna drop this down. Minus 0 0.03y. equals, here I've got 0 0.07 times y. So when you multiply a number times y, it's just, it just hooks them together, essentially. So you've got 0 0.07 y, but I also need to do the 0 0.07 times 10,000. So again, I'm just punching that in my calculator, 0 0.07 times 10,000 gives me plus 700. So drop down your equal. Look to make sure that there's not any like terms on either side. This one's a y, but this one's not, so I can't put those together. This one's a y, but this one's not, so I can't put those together. So now I'm to the step, do I have all my Y's together on one side? And I don't, which means you're gonna wanna cancel out. Don't, don't worry about that they're decimals or anything like that. I have Y's on both sides, which means I want to cancel out my small one. Well, if one of them's negative and one of them's positive, your negative one's gonna be your smallest one, right? Negative numbers are always smaller than positive numbers. So I'm going to cancel out this y. How do I always do that? Even though it's a decimal, it's the same step. I'm going to cancel out the minus 0 0.03 with a plus 0 0.03y. If you do it to this side, you've got to do it to this side. I'm going to add 0 0.03y to that other side and put it, and remember, if it's a y, what I'm going to be adding it to is the other y's over here. So I need to add 0.03y. 
So now look where you're at. This is gone, right? Minus plus of the same thing while we did it. All that's left over here is 2,400. Let's see, I need to add those Y's together. Again, I'm just getting out my calculator and I need to do 0 0.07. So just type it in exactly like you need it, 0 0.07 plus 0 0.03. So plus 0 0.03. gives me 0.1. So let's see, when I added these y's together, it gave me 0.1 y. Bring down my plus 700. So now, this is the y that I'm trying to get to be alone. Just use your normal steps. If this one, the number hooked on goes away last, right? It still goes away last, even though it's a decimal. The rule says, if there's a number hooked on, it's gonna stay hooked on until the very end, no matter what it is. So here's what I need to get rid of, is the plus 700, which means I need to subtract 700. So let's see, I've got 2,400 minus 700. I don't wanna make a simple mental mistake in my head. So I'm probably just gonna punch that in. 2,400 minus 700, which gives me 1,700 equals, now remember that's gone. Just drop down what's left, which is 0.1 Y. So all that's left is a hooked on number. And just like on every single other problem we've done to get rid of a hooked on number, you divide by it, whatever it is. So I am dividing by 0.1. Divide by 0.1. So the 0.1s disappear here. There's your Y all by itself, which means once you do this work, over here, you're done, right? That's the math. So 1,700 divided by 0.1. Again, I'm just typing that in my calculator. Gives me 17,000. Okay. All right, so this Sunday, due, we have 2.2 and 2.3 due on Sunday, the 31st at midnight. Now, next week, it says the only thing that we're going to cover is 2.4, but I just looked ahead at 2.4. Now, they're word problems, so it will take a minute, but there's only five of them. So we're going to put some more stuff in next week. We're not just going to work over five problems, okay? And plus, the last part of this class does have a lot of stuff in it. So we're going to do more than 2.4 next week. We'll, we'll probably do 2.4 and 2.5 at least, okay? But that's next week. The only thing due this Sunday at midnight right? This is what it looks like when you go in. These two things that were due last week, you'll notice that um, you should you won't be able to click on them anymore, right? Because they were due last week. Anything that has a 131 next to it, that's when that's due, which is 2, 2, and 2, 3. This 2, 7, it's open, so you can get into it if you wanted to look at 2, 4, right? It's not going to hurt you. You can't hurt it. Even if you get them all wrong, you can go back next week and rework them. Okay, it doesn't hurt you to open up stuff and look at it. Okay, all right, any questions? I've already taken roll, so I will, I'm gonna stop the recording.